There you are, folks. Um, cleaned up a little bit. Vacuumed. Kind of, sort of have this put back together a little. Um, there's a few things that are going to have to uh, be reevaluated. Um, we did get the water lines all out. That one's still down there where that little cap is. Got some foam and foamed up, foamed up, foamed up that crack and a couple that were on this wall at least. Um, it's been a little cool lately. It's been uh, very windy. Um, I think it got up to maybe 55 today. But I just came out here. It's 57 in here now. And that... How the hell did I do that? I, I have no feeling in the tip of this finger, so stuff like that happens a lot. A little blood blister. Oh well. Um, that's been off for about three days. And it's been 57 in here. I, I can work with that. Um, it's raining right now. Just a little bit. I've mowed the lawn. Did a little straightening up. Got most of our... Uh, massive pile of wood burned up there's a little bit left we're gonna burn the rest of it get it really really well finished and then we're gonna take that ash and sprinkle it on the lawn because it's good for the grass um i have a cabinet that i'm gonna be bringing out and that cabinet is gonna go over here so i need to reconfigure this a little bit and I'm questioning, I've got a dust, um, I'm questioning setting it up like, like we talked about, like dresser on the bottom and shelves on the top. There we go. Because I don't know if it's going to hold this thing. It's a little, uh, it's not in the best shape. How much room we got here? And it might be too tall. I don't want to go more than there, because that's just pushing into that. So, 30 inches. It's coming out here one way or the other. It's just uh, if it's going to go there or not. So let me go get it and bring it out. My back's very angry with me today, but got to be done. Well, how's that for a start? I know we've talked about this before, but this is very similar to what this wall's going to look like when I'm done with it. Um, you know, we'll come in about six inches from here. About six inches from there. We'll have two dressers about this height but uh this has got a bow at the top this is belonged to my parents and it, their tv set on it and they had a a really early flat screen that was kind of heavy and it just sat on this thing for so long it bowed the top of it but i think it's okay it ain't too bad you got a little bit of a gap but it's all right it'll hold um i've got some shelves to go in there what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull these drawers out. If if they'll fit, they may be a little too wide. One of these should come out. Yeah, they're going to be just a little too wide. Damn. I thought I'd just put the whole drawer in there, but I guess not. I guess not. That's all right. Um, yeah, so there's shelves that go in there. We'll turn that into some storage. I still have that little shelf there I can do something with. Um, and then, yeah, that stuff will just get sorted and stored. Maybe go get some of those cheapy little fabric boxes and sort some of this stuff out. Then I can get rid of some of these. Uh, yeah, there we go. We had to change it a little bit. The way I was doing it wasn't quite working. 
And if I could get rid of some of these duplicates, I'd have a little more room. Like okay, I've got an extra iron sword, I've got an extra Metroid. Um, got two Super Mario Worlds. It's two Mario twos. I've got two Majora's Masks, two uh, Ocarina of Times, two Jet Force Geminis, two Golden Eyes, two Perfect Darks, two South Parks. I think two Rogue Squadrons. Yeah, two Rogue Squadrons. Um, the reason, I don't know if I told the story in any of these videos, the reason I have so many of these duplicates, uh, a buddy of mine, we were, we were just wee little, wee little assholes. Uh, we were in kindergarten together and then I moved and this would have been 89, 89, 90. And then in 92, I moved and went to a different school. But then in 95 and 96, everybody moved from elementary school to a, basically a secondary school. Like it was a, the school I left was K through three. The school I went to was K through five. Um, the school we went, I ended up back with him with was uh, four, five, and six. And when I got back there, we were in sixth grade together. We were in band together. And then we had a lot of classes together in seventh grade and eighth grade and ninth grade. And they were all, you know, band class and things like that. I was a band geek. Could you tell? Um, so anyway, we just kind of picked back up being friends again. And a uh, very quiet kid, very shy kid. Uh, new Taekwondo. I got his, his dad was in the retired army and he had an older brother who was in the Air Force. You know, all this, you know. Uh, a very different, very different uh, uh, upbringing from mine, and a very different. That is guitar cables. Uh, just very different, very different life than mine. Grew up in a not a uh, excessively religious home, but a religious home, and mine was very not. He listened to. Uh, God, you guys are gonna love this. He listened to a lot of um like 70s and 80s like uh I don't even know what what you'd really want to call it. Um look up King Diamond. If you don't know who King Diamond is, look look him up. So he listened to a lot of stuff like that. We started playing guitar at about the same time. Um Played in a couple bands together. Anyway, when we were younger people, a lot of the time we spent hanging out together was playing video games. He liked video games. I like video games. One of these days, I'll get my perfect dark cartridge down and we'll hook it up. Because, God, we had to have put tens of thousands of miles in that combat simulator. Um... Because it tracks how far you walk, for whatever reason. And I'll bet, I will bet, we've, we've gone a long way in that game, right? So, anyway. Um, well, long story short, too late, uh, he died. He, uh, after high school, he went and enlisted, as was the thing that you do in that family. No judgment. I love his parents very much. I even don't mind his brother. Uh, his brother is kind of a jerk, but not, you know, he's jerking away an older brother is a jerk, which is the way that I'm a jerk. Anyway, um, now he, he enlisted, and this would have been, we graduated in 2002, so, you know, if you know anything about anything, what was going on in the world... With America in the early 2000s. He uh, got deployed over to um, Middle East. I don't think he ever ended up in Iraq. 
He did end up in Afghanistan for a little while, and, you know, like so many other people, he came back a little different, uh, a little damaged, a little broken, not the same guy, right? And he struggled with a few things, and uh, as much as I joke about, you know, how much... I, I imbibe, um, he would, he would, uh, drink with me, he would out drink me, and, you know, he was my height, but I had 75 pounds on the guy, even when I wasn't fat, you know, um, but yeah, couldn't, couldn't really handle his, his drink much. Ended up getting pulled over and got a DUI. And had to go to court. This may be more information than any of y'all care to hear, but... Um, he said, would you mind driving me to my court appearance? I said, yeah, absolutely. You know? That's what friends do. We are buds. We are pals. So... You need a ride? I am happy to provide for you, my friend. Probably said it in almost that exact way. Hey. Anyway, um, I said, you tell me when, I'll pick you up. He got his own apartment. Hadn't lived on his own, really, ever. Uh, lived with his parents. Right out of high school into the army, into the military. You know, I don't think he, uh, some people do alone better than others, right? I do alone, I think, pretty damn well. Um, he did not do it well. My mom, bless her heart, she's, uh, she's been with us now for over 60 years. Anyway, um, she doesn't do alone very well. And she, that's one of the biggest things. Like when I moved out, it's like, well, who are you going to stay with? Like uh, nobody. Well, who's going to take care of you? Nobody, <laughs> you know, doing, doing the mom thing. Can't, uh, fault her for that. But, you know, she, she told me sometime quite a bit later, like the, the she said, being alone would drive me crazy. And I would, it would make me very sad and very depressed. And I worried that you live alone, you're going to be very sad, you're going to be very depressed. I said, no, I'm the exact opposite. Anyway, so him living alone, doing the military thing, his upbringing, and, you know, just, he, he, he didn't, he didn't handle it well. And, uh, so the day I go to pick him up, I go to pick him up, and I'm outside his apartment, and I go up the stairs, and I knock on the door, and he doesn't answer, and I thought, well, that's really weird. And I go, and I back down to my car, and I get my phone, and I call him, and he doesn't answer. I'm like, oh, that's really weird, too. All right, that's, that's where we're at. Um... So I call him a couple more times, and he's still not answering. And so I go up and knock on the door a couple more times, and he's still not answering. What is this in my pocket? Oh, I need that. That's got to go to work. That's important. Um, hey, look, our light. And I'm, uh, you know, eventually I get to the point where like, well, he ain't here. He's a, uh, maybe he got someone else to give him a ride. It's not like him, but maybe. So, uh, I get a call from a buddy of ours about two hours later. It's like, yeah, they found him out at this little reservoir outside of town, and he'd shot himself. No. I don't even remember why we started talking. Oh, the games. Yeah, the games. Um, so, it's a R.I.P. to him asshole.
And I say that because he would expect me to. Because he could be. He learned that from me. Um, no, but, but after he died and we had a service for him and it was, it was me and this other guy and his parents and that was really it. I think his brother and his brother's wife were there, but they couldn't stay very long because he was still active at the, at the time. So, you know, he had enough time to like come back and, you know, be there for a week and they had to leave. And, uh, yeah, a nice little service. Nothing, nothing fancy, nothing extravagant. Like I said, he was cremated, buried the urn. Um, it was a Lutheran service, if I recall. I believe the, the minister was Lutheran. Pretty sure it was. Anyway, um, so about a month later, I get a call from his mom. She says, we've been going through some of his stuff. We've pulled out a few things that we think you would like to have. If if you can stop by the house sometime, um, we'd love to give them to you. I said, oh, yeah, I can do that. Um, you don't have to do that. You know, she says, no, this is, we, we think, we don't know what to do with it. You know, it, it, it would be better for us if you had it, basically, kind of a thing. I said, okay. <clears throat> so I went over there and they handed me this box and in this box was all of his video game stuff all of it N64 games Super Nintendo games I don't think he had any NES games a lot of Super Nintendo a lot of N64 uh, a couple of DS things um, no consoles he didn't have any of his consoles for whatever reason, uh, which is fine, honestly. God, it's like, do you see what I got on that shelf? I don't need any more of those. But they gave me all of that, and they gave me a guitar, and they said, uh, <laughs> yeah, this has turned into a long story. Um, they said to me, for the longest time, you were really not only his best friend, but you were his only friend, because no one else you know, would hang out with him, wanted to talk to him, whatever, whatever. And I said, well, he got along with a lot of people in school. He just, he was just so quiet. You know, people thought that he was unapproachable and he was a lot more approachable than I was. Um, I just fake it. It's starting to rain. Anyway, so I'm going to sit down on the back step here and finish this little story. Anyway. A lot of those games came from them. That's why I've got a lot of duplicates. Uh, this guy, he uh, he used, basically, he went to school on the GI Bill. Oh, man, it's really raining now. Um, and he studied guitar and music performance. And one of the finest guitar players, one of the most talented guitar players uh, I ever he, he vastly surpassed me. Um, you know, I had, we, we kind of started at the same time. He took lessons. I was more self-taught. Uh, and, and there was, there was a while where we kind of, we, we paced each other pretty good. And then I, I pulled forward a little bit. Then he'd just like shoot past me at a million miles an hour. And, uh, after the last time he did that, I never caught back up. And I never really wanted to. I don't know if you see that little spark right there. There's a hole in the clouds just in that one little spot. And there's a star right there. I don't know if y'all can see it. I'm trying to get it. Yeah, it's right there. Anyway. So that's why I have the duplicates. And the physical... Like, having a second Majora's Mask to me doesn't mean anything, right? Having a, that second copy of Perfect Dark to me doesn't mean anything. Because I can remember, I don't know how many times, sitting on the floor when I was a kid at, at our house, playing that game, playing Mario 64 when it came out, and that goddamn piano 
scaring the bejesus out of us the first time we found it. Um, I have a copy of uh, King of Dragons in there. We played King of Dragons on a band trip at an arcade and loved the game, and we found it at like a play and trade on another band trip years later. So we, you know, we didn't bring like a ton of money with us. It was just a one day trip. We brought enough for like lunch. So we like pooled our funds and bought the game and we'd sit and play that until we, you know, got bored of it. That's still one of my favorite games. I don't I don't need the physical thing. You know, I remember the stuff. That's some that makes me weird to some people cuz I don't want to I don't want a memento. You know, I don't need a thing. There are some things like when my dad's dad died, or my dad's mom, excuse me. My dad's dad died when I was like four or five. I didn't really know him. But apparently I, I have his, uh, his his taste for lemon drops. That's something I got from that. Anyway, my dad's mom died. And she had this little blue Tupperware sugar dish. A little sugar bowl kind of thing. And, and you know, I said, well, we're going through her stuff. Is there anything you would like? And I said, I want that. I don't use sugar. But whatever, whatever it was about that thing, just that was it. That's what reminded me of her and her house and, and all of that. So, and I, I can still picture her kitchen in my mind. She's been dead over 20 years now and she, she moved. Um, they were widening a road and had to tear her house down. And so she ended up moving out of that house when I was in a sophomore, maybe. So 2000, 2001. Yeah, probably. Anyway, um, but I can remember, I can't remember a damn thing about the new house. I don't remember where she kept that damn sugar bowl, but I can remember exactly where it was. If you came into her kitchen, nobody used the front door. Everybody came in the, the back door. Um, you would be facing east. No, excuse me, facing north. You'd be facing north, directly in front of you, other opposite side of the kitchen from the door is the stove. To the left of the stove was the microwave, and on top of that microwave was a little stack of paper plates and this sugar bowl. And right next to the microwave was the coffee pot. I remember that. I remember. I will always remember that every time I look at that sugar bowl. And my mom's mom, who uh, I feel like I got along with better than anybody else in the family, uh, including my mom's dad. <clears throat> She briefly, briefly tried to be a, a painter. <clears throat> Excuse me. She wasn't very good. She only did it for a little while and said, I'm not very good. I'm not going to do this anymore. And and this is, you know, it's a different age. It's a different era. Um, my, my mom's mom had painted, uh, attempting to do like a tasteful nude of a lady on velvet, right? Because <laughs> that's, that's a thing people did. And uh, when she died, you know, is there anything you want? I want that picture. I still have it. The frame broke. I haven't reframed it. It's, it's hanging up in the office in the house, and it will eventually end up out there in the in the studio, but that hangs up on the wall in, in, in my house. And, uh, yeah. That's another one of those things. I just, I look at that. I remember where it was in their house. Um, I don't have any memories that are specifically attached to that painting, but there are things that I remember specifically when I look at that painting. And yeah, that was my first real job was uh, working with her. She owned a business and I needed a job after school when I was in uh, junior high. That's where I worked. I'd walk the, I don't know, mile, go work for an hour and a half or two hours, <clears throat> five days a week. I'd leave a 20 bucks in my pocket and I was living large. Anyway, I should probably eat something. It's getting close to bedtime and I had a handful of potato chips and some cottage cheese and I don't think that's a, you know. Quite, quite appropriate. Anyway, thank you guys. See you later.